Welcome to Laptop Radio. Today's topic is tokenization of gift cards. We have Ariel with us, and he is the co-founder of Swapping Gifts. Hello, Ariel. How are you? Good. How are you, Michelle? I'm good. First, tell us about yourself. Tell us your story. Yeah, my story. It's a bit boring story. Um, currently, co-founder of a business called Swapping Gifts. Previously, I have quite quite a bit of experience in the industry in blockchain. Did a few different projects over the years. Probably started somewhere in 2016, 15. And mm-hmm. since then, I've been around that industry in various heads. Before that, I was mainly in the family office business, single family office business. So this is basically the broad overall background of myself. And in the past three years, we have been developing solution around the corporate cash slash gift cards industry with the solutions that uh, blockchain can provide to that specific, you can call it industry or vertical. I'm not sure what's the right word to call it. Awesome. I love personally the idea and the reality of tokenization gift cards. Not only because I came from a payments background, but as a consumer, I just find them pretty useful. Of course, I have Starbucks gift cards and during the holidays and birthdays and special occasions. Consumers usually purchase gift cards and use it as a gift for other people. And the whole idea of tokenization of gift cards It's super awesome. How did you first come out with the idea and what was the aha moment? Yes, this is interesting. So I have been quite some time in the industry. We decided to go to the specific direction with gift cards and corporate cash and blockchain for for three main reasons. One is with with all the niceness and the gifts and and the beauty of the gifting market uh, itself, it, it is full with fraudulent activities and one of the main reason to tokenize gift cards is basically to eliminate fraud in the specific vertical of gift cards because there, there is a big pain in that industry one of the main reasons blockchain and decentralization and tokenization and making the entire thing transparent it's actually solving a real uh, acute problem Mainly for retail users, I, recently I had, I, I've read an article, I think it went out in Fox before Christmas. A lot of people have been scammed from their gifts. They just came to the store, bought their gift cards, and then it was somehow stolen even before they managed to use it. One of the main reasons that took us to that direction is to basically fix the fraud part in that specific area. And we believe that blockchain is actually the best solution at the moment to tackle that. And there's a few more points. And the other one is in the blockchain slash crypto world, it is extremely difficult for basic retail user to actually access eventually real world goods and services. The corporate instrument is, is an amazing because it gives access directly to products and services without basically going via very complex for some, mainly for retail users in the blockchain slash crypto space. So it's basically bridging and make it much more efficient and effective, especially for, again, and we were talking about retail consumer users. We are not talking about sophisticated people who understand. We're just talking about very simple people who, for whatever reasons they have like crypto and they just want to go and just want to buy something in the shop. And this is basically 99% of the, in general, retail consumer market. The point number three is eventually we are big believers in the blockchain industry. And, and we think that to actually achieve mass adoption, the market in general, the blockchain industry have to give service to actual retail, day-to-day retail consumers. And so it will be beneficial for them. So if you look at few less cycles in the industry, go back to like 
10, 12 years, <laughs> Bitcoin and the entire crypto space was basically considered a criminal activity. And today it's being already listed as an ETF. There was major steps done in that direction, but the industry itself, it's still not really reachable for the mass adoption. And to simplify and give people access to the beautiful technology and the transparency that comes with it and different benefits that come with owning your own currency and to be able to actually convert it to real world goods and services. This is something that is, in our humble opinion, is very important because if you look at the ETF market for Bitcoin, for example, it only serves a very small number of people. It's not for mass adoption and mainstream. But going to the supermarket and buying something or going to Starbucks, people from Wall Street go down the office and go to the Starbucks and ordinary people just go to Starbucks and buy a coffee or go to the supermarkets. Eventually, the real consumer retail market is a huge market, huge potential market. And we really believe that solutions like ours and others that are aiming to solve problems for actual retail users, give them the security that blockchain provides and the transparency, it will move the entire industry to more sustainable directions that is not only based, let's say, let, let's look at the previous cycle that we had in the industry. It was mainly based on gambling. Te technically, you can call it like that. Gambling is an amazing business, but it's a very small business there. Consumer retail business is much larger market globally. And I think the bridge until mass adoption of blockchain currencies occurs, I think it's a very elegant bridge between the real world and the crypto world. We actually utilize it. And again, and, and the emphasis here is mainly on the retail consumer users that are not really technical or not really familiar or not the most sophisticated. I want my grandmother to be able to receive some tokens and to actually spend it without any problems and where she wants it. That's basically the end goal. I'm excited about blockchain technology. And my question would be, why do we need gift cards that are tokenized since we have gift cards already without blockchain? So why is blockchain significant? This is why I, what I said at point number one was because this specific, I'm not sure if you can call it an industry or a vertical, but it's basically plagued with a lot of fraud. And because it's extremely hard to forge a token with a representation, it actually solves this main problem for that specific industry. I'm, again, I'm not sure if you can call it an industry or a vertical. Mm -hmm. But as I told you, I, I, after our interview, I will send you personally an article. That's what I told you. And there was a, a massive phishing attack in gift cards before the Christmas in the US. And it was very big in the news. And that's exactly what we saw because everything is on chain. And it's basically immutable and you cannot duplicate it. And it's way more safer. It's basically like a container of that specific value of the codes because it basically completely removes the options to do fraud in that specific instrument. And there is also double spend and stuff like that. For example, if stuff happens, like you receive a gift card and mm -hmm. sometimes somebody can hijack the code. That's what happened before Christmas. And this was in Fox News. So Somebody just hijacked a lot of those cards and the people who went to redeem the cards in the store, the codes weren't valid because somebody already stole them. It's mm -hmm. almost impossible to do with what we have created because everything is on chain, everything is not transparent, including the denomination and how much each card contains. And we actually use ERC721 to contain the quote-unquote value inside. This was what one of the main <laughs> drivers for us to go to that specific direction to fix this specific issue because it's a major pain. And I'm not sure if your or your listeners know, but the corporate stock gift cards business or industry or vertical, whatever you want to call it, it's $1.3 trillion market annually. Mm -hmm. It's a large market and it, it suffers a lot from fraudulent activity and stuff like that. So we believe that blockchain can, and transparency can actually really solve this issue for a legacy type of business. Awesome. 
And with gift cards, of course, merchants are involved. Do you find that merchants are more open to the tokenization of gift cards? I believe they will be. At the moment, there is still a bridge, like a learning curve in mm -hmm. general, because mm -hmm. it's what I said, in my humble opinion, our industry in the last cycle got to very bad places because <laughs> the main emphasis of the entire industry went to gambling, basically. Call it whatever you want, but it's pure gambling. I will give you a little, again, my background. So the family office that I worked for was one of the largest bricks and mortar casinos in the world. So I a little bit understand the gambling business, <laughs> just a little bit. So it was one of the largest in the world and still up to today. But the point is that, again, the gambling business is amazing, is great, but it's very small. And, and it's unfortunately, it created a, a, a very negative mainstream look on the entire industry because not everybody in the industry is uh, in the gambling part of that industry. It's like you have the internet, for example. So there is online casinos, but there is also Amazon, an online shop. So which, mm -hmm. all those both are on the same internet, but this one is a casino and this one is a shop. Because at the moment, there is no full clear regulations in the space. And it's very hard for regulators and, of course, for eventually retail consumers to differentiate between, but it will happen eventually. How we see that more and more resources in general, and hopefully entrepreneurs and capital and people will get more into the retail part of the industry instead of the gambling part of the industry. It's not that different from the basic web internet as well. Eventually lines will be drawn. And I think, again, overall, I said the retail and consumer retail business is much larger in general as an industry than anything else and say we really hope it will be much more sustainable in in the current cycle that we are going into in in the industry and in terms of the tokenization of gift cards given that there are so many tokens out there what is ideal in terms of the offer of different tokens and different networks do you find it that offering and giving a lot of options for consumers is the best? Yes. We are, how to call we can say, agnostic. Mm -hmm. And our systems allows, it's quite interesting. I will not get into technical stuff, not to bore your audience. But in our system, it's not really a token. It's ERC721. It's a bit different than ERC20 for many reasons, but the point is it is created on chain automatically. And uh, as you spend it, it's deleted automatically on chain as well. And the entire process is transparent. And again, we are blockchain agnostic. We don't take sides. We just utilize what the infrastructure have been built up to this moment. And we apply this infrastructure and we also develop a lot of our own infrastructure. But in terms of blockchains themselves, we are blockchain agnostic. And hopefully at the moment we support four different blockchains. We support a uh, Ethereum, we support Polygon, we support Avalanche, and we support BSC. But we can add it more and we will be adding more. It just takes development time and other resources and efforts. But eventually, hopefully, we will be connected to all of the networks and the system works the same on every network. Awesome. And then in terms of tokenization of gift cards, and how we use gift cards today, how we used tokenized gift cards versus how we use physical gift cards. What's the difference in terms of the user experience? The difference between the user experience is mainly the security and the transparency mm -hmm. that the blockchain provides. It basically eliminates the fraud option. So unless, I mean, it's much harder to hack a blockchain system than to fish your, because mo most of the gift cards are basically in digital form. They're just codes. Mm -hmm. Imagine that we are containing those codes in an 
ERC721, and it's denominated there, but it's visible in our systems. And it's also visible on chain. I'll try to give you an, an example. We, we basically created a plastic card in a digital world. A metaverse digital representation of a plastic card. You can receive a gift card as a plastic card or as a code. When it's in plastic card, it's more secure than a code that uh, just sent to your email or something like that. Because someone can hijack your email and take the code and use it before you even uh, can use it. And in general, hacking an entire blockchain system just to extract $10 or $20 for someone, the, the amounts of energy for people to do that, it will remove their incentive. <laughs> you understand what I mean? This is why I'm saying that we are tackling it from uh, the, 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 the specific fraud um, fraudulent activity in the gift card industry from that perspective, as soon as more and more companies will adapt to block blockchain technologies in that specific, again, industry, vertical, whatever you want to call it, the less it will be worth for illicit players to abuse the gift cards ecosystem because it will purely from efforts. So if today it's extremely easy to do some phishing attack on someone's email and just take a, a code from someone to try to hack a blockchain, it's not worth the whatever, $100 that someone can fish from an email or something like that. It just make it unsustainable for the bad actors out there. I actually read an article that Amazon uh, started to do some pilots in the ERC721 uh, uh, as well. And I believe that uh, this will solve a massive problem for the retail consumer. And again, after our conversation, I will just send you this specific article that mm -hmm. happened before Christmas in the US. And it's an election year and it was in the main news, one of the main news stories in Fox. So <laughs> it's a pretty acute problem if, if it's really important in the news cycle. Yeah. What is some of your visions with regarding gift cards? Is your vision that there will be more mass adoption? Since I feel like you're bridging the tokenized blockchain world with real world assets like gift cards. Do you think that more people will adapt to it just because you will never lose your gift card because it's always on the blockchain and you can still cash out in, in terms of getting a gift card and use it at certain stores? Yeah, this is one aspect of our entire vision. Mm -hmm. But if we talk a little bit mid to long range vision, mm -hmm. we are aiming to create something between M-Pesa and Blackhawk, if you know those two entities. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will give you, because our solution is not uh, tied to a specific geography. At the moment, we have support in over 60 different countries. And there is a major pain in the fraud. In each geography, there is a different uh, type of problems that eventually it solves. So the mid-long-term vision is to basically create something like M-Pesa and Blackhawk type of a solution, hopefully to create it completely decentralized. So, for example, businesses will be able to go and mint to create their own corporate cash directly on blockchain-based systems and then use different methods to distribute it however they want, etc. That's long-range vision of ours. It's not just as simple as just tokenizing the gift card because we think in certain geographies it can actually solve many other issues. I assume since you have payments background, you are familiar with M-Pesa in Kenya and yeah. how tremendous effect it had an entire society because it's basically also was gift card. So in their case, it was just a, a cellular minutes, like cellular points uh, of, of, of minutes of conversation. But at some point, because of different inflations and stuff like that, the, the, yeah. the actual people, the retail people lost basically the belief in the fiat system and, and the Impesa technically became a bank at some point because people had more trust in the Impesa 
phone minutes than in their own government's fiat currencies because they weren't managing it correctly because of whatever reasons, I'm not sure. But the point is that the solution might change per geography and the needs might change per geography. And the fact that we use ERC-721, it's also gives much more flexibility than ERC-20, for example. Yeah, uh, in many different geographies, and again, with your payment background, you probably understand what I'm referring to. But uh, yeah, 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 I'm excited about the vision of gift cards, especially when they are tokenized. I noticed that you have a stablecoin and corporate cash as well. Would you tell us a little about your stablecoin and the role of stablecoins in the gift card tokenization ecosystem? So we technically do not have a stable coin. Okay. It's, it's not a stable <laughs> coin. That's the thing. You can call it a version of stable coin because <laughs> it's ERC721 and it has a representation of on-chain of the US dollar, but it's only redeemable in our system. You can only use it in our system. So it's not like an open loop. It's a closed loop. So... Calling it a stable coin, it will, it, it will be wrong in one hand, but you can say it's a stable <laughs> container of value. Yeah, in it's... certain cases, it's more <laughs> stable even than the stable coins. We all have seen what happened with Luna Terra. So again, in our case, we are not stable coin in a traditional way of how people see stable coin because it's stable coin only inside our system. It's a very similar. If you have like Amazon, if you have Amazon cash, yeah, okay, you have a $100 Amazon cash, but you can't go to Nike and spend your Amazon cash there. But in our case, we just have happen to have 60 geographies and a few thousands of brands around the world. It makes our specific tool, it's called a gift, but uh, it's a <laughs> I will be careful with calling it a stable coin because it, again, it's 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 stable coin as Amazon Cash, basically. Yeah. It's as stable as Amazon Cash on that on that spectrum of of regulations as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I just wanted to clarify that last year, as everyone know, Luna USDT, their Luna stable coin, DPEG, and it and it crashed, and that one is really based on volatility. So it would go up and down and it crashed when the market crashed. And then there's also USDC, which do peg, but they did soft it pretty promptly after it do peg a little bit. And what Ariel is saying is that a gift is a <laughs> is comparable to Amazon Cash because it's a coin that is tied to their company ecosystem. I would still call it a stable coin, but it's it just more a stable, stable coin. Stable coin. You cannot <laughs> call it a stable <laughs> coin. I love to call it a stable one, coin. One, it's not the RC20. Second yeah. of all, it's like an IOU type of right. If if you want to go a little bit more technical and uh, so we actually collaborate a lot with the uh, USDC in our settlement mechanisms, etc. But it's a completely different conversation because you need to see the product and how it works to actually understand. So I will not even get into that point, but <laughs> very important for me to say that we are not a stable coin. And okay, least, we're going to call it. Want, not in what is a, a general perception of a, a stable coin currently. We're going to call it a swapping gift. No, it's just, a gift. it's just a gift. That's how it's called. A gift. Okay, we're going to call it a gift, which is a type. Because it's a gift. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically, a gift is a type of cash <laughs> that's on the blockchain that is tied to the company. <laughs> that is That you can use it <laughs> to swap right. gift cards. I hope Amazon will not be too mad at me because I use the A. <laughs> yes, the, use the A gift. But we use the A gift. I, I will tell you a secret. It actually was my mom's idea. Okay. Oh. We, we didn't know how to call it. We had few few different names. And my mom said, no, you call it A gift. 
because it's a gift. <laughs> so 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 that's the true story of the name. <laughs> that's really awesome. So basically, it's called a gift because it's a gift. <laughs> yeah, because it's a gift. Yeah, it's, it's a gift. <laughs> that's why my mom told me because we had some different like names for it, and we wanted to know. We, we've been developing the systems for the Web three. It's the, the decentralized system. We, we we deployed a lot of energy. Uh, and a lot of development in the past two years on this specific product called Swapping Gifts. And um, there is a lot of technology deployed there and a lot of pain and tear. And uh, the thing is, uh, we, we are a bootstrap company. We are a very small team and we do everything uh, in-house because of many different reasons. But it has some good effects, some bad effects, but eventually uh, it created a certain culture and models that are very strong with solid foundations and technically they're very sophisticated i will finish with that we have two main pillars in terms of our technology and what we have already deployed one thing i will say all of our smart contracts are unupgradable we have created our own like aggregator to do this to do one part of the thing and then there is entire thing with a gift uh, which is another set of uh, very like, quite com complex smart contracts. And if you actually test our product, you will see how elegantly it's done in terms of what's actually happening on chain. And you will be able to appreciate the transparency part of it, which is very important. And because it's ERC721, it actually has a visual representation. By the way, to your point, the stable coin, you said, <laughs> if you really give an analogy of the real world, it's actually like a plastic card. So I want to try to explain people why, why it's different. I feel like those people, like, I don't know, 50 years ago that I tried to understand how they explained why physical plastic cards are better than uh, paper money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, today everybody uses plastic cards. Yeah. But 50 years ago when those in entrepreneurs went and they tried to convince people why plastic cards are more efficient than paper money. And I, I, I feel myself in the shoes of those people that I tried to imagine how they explained why anybody need a plastic. Why, why do you need a plastic to pay today everybody understand okay credit card yeah it makes sense of course credit card or whatever whatever plastic version of money is is cool but i try to imagine how they i i i think i read a few stories but they, 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 when they try to explain people and everybody laughed at them to go hey why do you need plastic yeah. a few thousand years ago people traded shells as, as, as yeah. a current means of exchange anyways it's uh, yeah so i think i like credit card gift cards do not charge you extra <laughs> or an in interest or late like fees because it has cash inside a gift <laughs> let's talk about corporate a, a, cash. A, 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 gift actually, a gift actually does not have cash inside it has gifts inside it has a gift, it's inside. Corporate it has a gift inside. inside that's the thing this is why it's not stable you cannot call it the stable coin because it has nothing to do with fiat eventually. It's very important to understand. You choose how to open your A gift to which brand you never receive fiat because it's a completely different world, completely different regulation. And, and again, we can speak hours about that. And Let me emphasize that. Unlike stablecoin, mm -hmm. which we can go to a centralized exchange and you can convert that to cash or fiat. So basically you can take 10 USDC and convert that to about 10 US dollar. However, with a gift, you could convert that to a gift card. So you cannot cash out. And that's one of the big difference. It's a main difference, especially um, again, in, in the regulatory world, again, we will not gonna get into that conversation because it will take us a long time. But the, the difference between gift cards and corporate cash and fiat uh, in regulation is, is is massive. I mean, it's two different worlds. Yeah. <laughs> if the A gift would contain dollars inside, it will be basically a fiat solution. It will be completely different, uh, the completely different product and, and thing. But yeah. It's completely different. It's it, very important to emphasize that part. Correct. Yeah. Then that would be a different kind of parts. Let's talk about corporate cash. So you call it corporate cash. Why do you call it corporate cash? You're referring to different merchants 
using these cards at certain merchants that could be redeemable. Is that correct? Yes, but I call it corporate cash because the corporate cash instrument, it's very old one, hundreds of years, mm -hmm. uh, and it's parallel to fiat systems. Mm -hmm. For example, I will give you an example, which I will take you to a different world. But if you go to Hong Kong, I'm not sure what's going on there today, but all money that is printed in Hong Kong, the fiat quote unquote money, they, it's considered to be corporate cash actually, because if you go to Hong Kong and you have Hong Kong bills, it doesn't say that it's property of the central bank, it's a property of the bank. So, and the bank is a corporation. And in specifically, I'm not sure what's going on there today, but a few years ago, this was the case. And historically, there was a large corporations. Everybody likes to say that today's corporations like Amazon, Microsoft, or Google are big and evil, but I, I, I'm a student of history, and I remember reading about corporations like East India Company or West Dutch Company <laughs> that basically founded New York. It was a colony of the West Dutch Corporation in the 1700s. New York was a privately held territory by a corporation. So <laughs> historically speaking, corporations had much more power than the people tend to think that corporations have today. And in many cases, the corporation had their own type of currency. So for hundreds of years, maybe even more, the corporate cash was always an instrument alongside fiat. We will not go get into monetary systems and stuff like that because this will be too much, too long. But eventually, I call it corporate cash because it's a corporate cash. It's a cash that is owned by a specific corporation. Either it's like, let's say, Amazon card or Nike card or a small shop card. It doesn't really matter. But the, the technical terminology is it's a cash that is being printed by the specific corporation. You can call it gift cards. In some cases, I think you can even include loyalty points under the same umbrella, in at least in terms of uh, regulations. And tell us, is there anything that you wanted to share that I have not asked you? Peace, love, happiness to everybody. <laughs> in a serious note, especially if your listeners are in the industry, what I do want to share and maybe to some new entrepreneurs that are coming into the industry. And I really wish that the, the entire industry, specifically in this cycle, will go into more directions of mass adoption and actually solving problems for the and retail users in many different verticals. So in, we, we specifically chose this gift card instrument, but in my humble opinion, blockchain can solve a lot of issues in the areas of identity, in the areas of data ownership, and in general, the philosophical view of transparency, fairness, and then more open economy and open societies and more sustainable way of doing business with creating solutions and being focused eventually on mm -hmm. the retail user in general in all of the verticals and because in our humble opinion this is what matters the most especially when we are developing technology it has to benefit eventually my mom okay it has to be like a refrigerator eventually if you understand what i mean a refrigerator or a computer or something that benefits eventually everybody in the long run this is how i would like to summarize it okay awesome what is one piece of advice that you have for the community for the blockchain community yes or the world at large I know the world at large. <laughs> the world at large. I will say the same thing. I will say something similar again. Peace, love, create good, cool stuff, create cool technology, which is fully addressed to solve real people uh, issues and avoid the greed <laughs> and be strong and focus on the retail consumers, eventually humans that will okay. benefit from whatever anybody builds and especially for the entrepreneurs awesome how do people find swapping gifts 
can find it via Google. They can just write swapping.gifts. It's pretty easy to find. It's online for like more than, than a year. It also appears in most of the app shops. For example, if somebody have like a Coinbase wallet, so we appear there in their app shops. And it's very easy to find if somebody looking for it. Awesome. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, bye-bye. Bye.